uh, our focus today is on overcoming familiar spirits. May the Lord open our understanding to receive his word in the mighty name of Jesus. The subject this morning is on overcoming familiar spirits. And for a test, we'll be taking the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19. Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19. He says, And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mortar. Should not a people seek their God for the living to the dead? Now, in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19 the prophet Isaiah having lamented over the state of Israel at that time and also proclaiming the judgment of God began also to encourage them to seek the Lord and he also perceived that because the land at his time has been polluted with idolatry and all manner of spirits, medium, wizards, fortune tellers, that when the people can't find God on account of their sins, they were going to turn to seek those who have familiar spirits. And so he was cautioning them that should a people seek the living among it? Should you go to those who are dead to seek counsel? To seek direction? To seek knowledge? Should you not seek the Lord? Why should you go to those who are mediums? Those who are wizards? Those who have or operates by familiar spirit. Now this passage accurately defines for us what a familiar spirit is. A familiar spirit is a disembodied spirit that specializes in transmitting knowledge from the spirit realm to the physical. Familiar spirits are saddled with the responsibility of updating the data bank of the kingdom of darkness. They are a knowledge or information based spirit. So this spirit specializes in transmitting information. And because they are familiar with territories, families, and individuals they have up to date account of the history weaknesses strength and events of territories of nations of families of individuals so it's so easy for them to provide information when you go to the demonic kingdom for help most times people seek for knowledge wisdom and power in order to decipher what the outcome of event will be or to get power to become rich to accomplish a task to become famous to do one thing or the other those are the three primary reasons for which people patronizes the kingdom of darkness and this spirit called the familiar spirit is the one that empowers mediums fortune tellers diviners wizards when it comes to assessing knowledge 
So when you go to a native doctor, for instance, or a warlock, and that warlock wants to assess some information, he wants to know the name of your street, your account balance, uh, the color of your clothing or underwears, he wants to know <laughs> your phone number. All he needs to connect to is a familiar spirit. Uh, there was a deliverance recently and a young girl said she had 32 spirits, demonic spirits. Now, you know, demonic spirits are specialized spirits. They are spirits that are servant. In other words, there's a spirit that all it does may just be to make people blind. So you call it a blinding spirit. There's a spirit that all it does is to make people deaf. You call it what? A deaf spirit. Then there's a spirit that has ability to make people deaf and dumb. You call it a moot spirit. There's a spirit that all it does is to afflict people with infirmity. You call it the spirit of infirmity. So, you know, demonic spirits exercise power in a particular direction. Do you understand that? They have the ability to make a specific thing happen. So in order for a witch or a wizard to become proficient in doing many things, he will need to inhabit, he will need to open his, his gateway to several spirits. Do you understand that? So he will have a spirit of death, he will have a spirit of affliction, he will have a spirit that helps him to transform if he wants to be changing forms, he will have a spirit that is familiar spirit to assess information. So when you come, he just start telling you about yourself and about things. And you'll be amazed. Do you understand that? That was what operated in the slave girl that was possessed with the spirit of divination. When she looked at Paul and Silas and she opened up her mouth. Now you will think that prophecy is coming forth. No, she's just giving information. Do you understand that? To the uninitiated, that's prophecy. This is one of the spirit that false prophets, sorcerers operating. When you go to those who are channelers, mediums, those who are into horoscope, um, crystal ball, this is the spirit that powers Uji board. So when you are asking questions, it will be giving you answer. Tarot cards reading, this is the spirit that powers it. And they have information at their fingertips, up to date. And based on those information they have, they can make predictions. So they can predict evil occurrence, they can predict certain things and you know, they will also send spirit to make those things happen. So if they tell you, for instance, that there will be a fire outbreak, you have to settle with 10,000 and you refuse, when you go, the spirit that causes fire outbreak will come visit your house. So by the time they dazzle you two, three times, you believe them. You remember Simon the sorcerer? The Bible says he had bewitched the people with astonished work for a long time. So they began to say, this man, is the great power of God. So, today we want to deal with familiar spirits. And I want you to know that apart from transmitting information, this spirit also specializes in mimicking individuals. Family, relatives, they impersonate as a, a dead family relative or a familiar person. So sometimes you could have dream experience where somebody who looks like your father begins to visit you like after my dad died I'll just see him in a dream do you understand that and you know one day he was talking to me about an idol I said no 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 this is not my dad this is not my dad so I rebuked that spirit and it ceased somebody said she was looking at Tupac Shakur's um poster in her room and then Tupac, the poster started talking to her and she started speaking to the person to Tupac and so Tupac started giving cancer, telling her things, informations and they were true 
No, it's a spirit. That's familiar spirit. And some of persons have so developed intimacy, fellowship with this spirit to the point that they'll get information from this spirit and think they are operating by the gift of word of knowledge. Do you understand that? There are people like that. What they are giving is information from familiar spirit, but they think that it is the Holy Spirit that is operating the gift of word of knowledge in them. No, it's not. In fact, some persons have built relationship with a dead relative that comes to their dream every now and then to give them information. Tell them, don't travel tomorrow. Something is going to happen. And you know, if they travel, the thing will happen. And then they say it's God. It comes in the form of my late father, my late uncle, and he's giving me what? Inform That's a familiar spirit. That's a familiar spirit. Let's see a, a startling example in scripture in the life of um, Prophet, uh, King Saul. You know, the primary reason of consulting this spirit is spelled out here. He says, and when they say to you, seek those who have familiar spirit. That's those who are mediums and those who are what? Wizard. He says, who whisper and mutter. They peep and mutter. He says, should not a people seek their God? So the essence of seeking them is for cancer, for direction, for information. And the prophet is saying that that is wrong. Because you know, if you look at the book of Leviticus 19, 31, God said that those who, he says, do not seek those who are familiar spirit or those who are wizard or spiritists to be defied by them. In other words, when you come into acquaintance with this spirit or fellowship with them, you'll be defiled. And not only that, if you fellowship with them, God says he will turn his face against you to cut you off. So this was like a reminder. The Lord was reminding them that don't go consult the dead for cancer. Don't seek the living among the dead. Let me read from 1 Samuel chapter 28. I will encourage you to read the entire chapter. But I will just read from verses 4 to 7. 1 Samuel 28 from verses 4 to 7. It says, Then the Philistines gathered together and came and encamped in Shunem. So Saul gathered all Israel together and they encamped in Gibor. Next verse. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. He says, and when so inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams or by Hurim or by the prophets. Now, what was so seeking? Information and help. He wanted to know what would be the outcome of the battle. He wanted to know if there was a strategy he can deploy. And that's mainly the reason why people get involved in horoscope. He said, what will my future be like? Who will I marry? That's why they get involved with Uji board, palm reading, crystal ball, diviners, native doctors, fortune tellers, mediums, spiritists. All they are looking for is information. Is there something I can do to turn the situation around, to change the tide? What does tomorrow hold in store? What am I destined to be? So for Saul, he wanted to find out the outcome of the war. But you know, even though God had left him long ago, and he felt he had no need for God, the day came when just a little information from God meant a lot. Please build your work with God. Build your work. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. The Bible says now the spirit speaks expressly. That in the later days, 
Do you understand that? Then he says that when he is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. Do you understand that? So the Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. He shows you things. How will he show you? He will tell you about it. What to come. Whatever he hears, he will speak to you. He will take of that which is mine and reveal it to you. He said, because all that belongs to the Father is mine. So we don't, we are not inhabited by a dumb spirit that doesn't speak. I wonder a believer for 24 hours, not even a whisper from the Holy Ghost. One year, not a whisper from the, something is wrong. Maybe you are grieving him. Maybe you are not fellowshipping with him. You've ignored him. You've abandoned him. And so, for a whole month, no Holy Spirit, good morning. How are you doing today? What will you have me do? And then when he prompts you to pray, to study, to read your Bible, you ignore him. You carry Facebook and you are browsing all social media from Facebook to YouTube, from YouTube to Snapchat, from Snapchat to... And then one day you come like so and say, who should I marry? Familiar spirit will speak. Who say, my daughter. <laughs> my daughter. He say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, Satan stayed in the corridors of heaven for a long time. If you read Ezekiel chapter 28, you find out that it was one of the cherub that covers that covered the Shekinah illumination so that when the high priest come into the presence of God and God begins to glow so that the Shekinah glory will not devour the flesh of man. So Satan knows a thing or two about God. So he can transform himself as an agent of light. He knows how God operates and he has copied that to organize his own kingdom do you understand that and he has generated false prophets you know there are people who think that is god that is speaking to them and you know it's not god say god ask you to marry the uh, husband of another woman say but this man is married say no the holy spirit told me that it was a mistake the man is my husband and the Holy Spirit said, I, I must marry him. God can't introduce you into adultery. Somebody said that God spoke to him to go and be to go and be gymming and not come for evangelism. God said you should abandon evangelism and you should start gymming. <laughs> You know, I've seen people say all oh, manner of things in the name of the Lord. Say, so, you know, I, I was I was just praying for a life partner, and one day I went by the well to fetch water. And there was no no pail, no rope, and then suddenly you just appeared and you brought a pail and fetched the water. And then we carried it together and we started going. I said, what is the meaning of this? He said, he said, God is saying that we are, you know, having something to do together for a, a lifetime. Said, like, like marriage, he said, yes. So God is saying, I'm your husband. He said, yes. So okay, let me go and pray. Because since God spoke to you, if he's the one who also what speak to me. And when I went to pray, God said, if you will come near that sister, he showed me a saw on the leg. He said, there will be an incurable wound. And I had to run for my life. Yeah, I've seen all people saying, toss yet God to control somebody. So, if you are truly born again, the spirit of God indwells you. Get acquainted with him. Fellowship with him. Please him. And at every crossroad, you won't need to wait before he will speak. 
You know, I've wondered how many times I am asking Holy Spirit something and He's not answering me, and then there is a challenge. He speaks quickly. And yet, what I've been asking, He has not answered me. I said, But Lord, you've not. He said, Keep praying, I will answer you. But keep praying, keep continue. One day I came, sought Him all day, and He was showing me all that things. What I needed to get from Him, He didn't tell me. And when it was evening, I said, Lord, you've not spoken to me about this man. He said, don't worry, go and come back tomorrow. Go home, eat, rest, come back. <laughs> if I tell you now, you won't come back. Go, go and eat and rest and come back tomorrow. So, so needed what? Help. But you see, he had been rebelling against the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God left him. Now, when he needed information and counsel, the Holy Spirit would not speak to him. So when he saw that the Lord would not speak to him, next verse, he says, Then Saul said to his servants, Find me a woman who has familiar spirit, who is a medium, that I may go to her and what inquire. I need information. I need knowledge. I need cancer. You know one of the most important commodity on planet earth today is knowledge. And they say knowledge is power. Information. Very expensive. Today, in today's world, people need information. People will pay to get information. In fact, there are people that are specializes in checking out on your spouse, whether your spouse is cheating on you. And you can pay them to investigate whether your spouse is cheating on you. So they'll be following your spouse everywhere. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, In fact, there is a woman who has a familiar spirit in Endor. But you know when he got there, what he requested for was science. Speaking to the dead. He said, please, I want you to bring up whoever I will name. And the woman said, you know that Saul has driven and killed all those who are familiar spirits and wizards. And you want to endanger my life. You know, he had disguised himself. Came as an ordinary man with two servants. Removed his, his rope. His purple rope. And he swore to her and said, my life for your life, you will not die. Now, there's a lot of debate whether it was Samuel that actually showed up or not. Now, I don't want to get into that and I don't have the time for it. But what I believe, this is my own opinion, is that God permitted Samuel to come forward. And this is the only occasion where it was a true dead personality that showed forth. In all other occasions, even if you get there and you see your father looks like your father and all the manners, maybe your father used to, to rub his stomach. And then as his priest says, ah, my son John, how are you? How is the earth? Then he rubs his stomach. It's not your father. <laughs> it's, a, it's a familiar spirit. It's mimicking your father. That's why when the woman saw the spirit coming, she trembled and said, I see one of the gods. Some other translations say a divine person coming. She, she trembled and then she said, ah, you have deceived me, you are Saul. Do you understand that? She didn't even know that it was so. So, a, a channeler, a medium, a, a, a witch, a fortune teller has no knowledge until he taps and connects to that spirit and gets information. And some can even begin to manifest and speak. The spirit will be manifesting and speaking through them and they'll speak as your parents. Maybe with a female voice or a male voice, and you will be convinced that it's your father. And they'll give you instruction. Now, if you do that, you'll be defiling your soul. And you'll be opening yourself to demons. 
You can't visit all those places, a channeler, a fortune teller, and not live with an unclean spirit. Somebody some time ago visited a native doctor because of her mother's health. When she got there, the native doctor, after he had made requests, said, there's a work clock in your home, go and bring it. The devil is using it to monitor your family. Ask for this, ask for that. And then he told her, he said, you are going now, your mother will be healed. But if you don't come back to thank me, when thunder strikes, you'll be dead. She left there. Her mother didn't get better. But do you know that even though it was months she had gone before we were talking, every time it rains and there's a thunderstorm, her heart almost jumps into her mouth. She's awestruck. Fearful and fear came into her life. Don't go and take some veneers in the demonic territories. What you'll be taking will be an unclean spirit. And it will spell doom. Many have gone to collect gifts from Satan. And it destroyed their lives. So don't, don't patronize the devil. So I believe God permitted somewhere to come forth. Now you may not believe that is okay. Just that won't decide whether you make heaven or not. So just go with your own opinion. But that's my own belief. He says, so he said to her, what is his form? And she said, an old man is coming up and is covered with a mantle. And so perceived that it was Samuel and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed down. Now, no, take it before. No, the verse before. The verse before. Okay, so when the woman saw Samuel, did you see that? That was verse, what verse is that? Verse 25. 25. He says, she cried out with a loud voice. Did you see that? He says, and the woman spoke to Saul saying, why have you deceived me? For you are so. Now, what she saw was not what she was expecting. She was expecting a demon to act like someone and comfort. But when she saw this being, she cried. Why did she cry with a loud voice? Fear struck her. All right, let's leave that because we need to quickly round off. Now, some time ago, somebody died in a family. And the people went to ask the person who killed him. It was a male that died. And when they came back, they began to give information of what has happened. Friends, whoever has died has died. Don't go and be looking for who killed who. And you know, surprisingly, when they came back, they brought information that it was the mother of this young man that killed him. And do you know they couldn't do anything? They couldn't do anything. So, some informations will not help you. Do you understand that? Some informations will not add value. To your life don't seek them all right so how do you overcome familiar spirits number one if you by any chance have opened the door to them in your life you need to repent of it when you repent maybe you have been to a fortune teller a medium You've patronized horoscope, seances, you went for a seance, you spoke with the dead. You know, whatever you've done, you played with tarot cards, UG board, you know, whatever it is, you need to ask God for mercy and close the doorway. It's when you have closed the doorway and taken the legal right from the enemy, then you can rebuke the spirit. And command it to leave. 
Is that clear? And also if you are having dreams about a dead relative and that relative is coming to give you information, coming to influence your life, you can also close doorways. Sometimes many of us would just so think about that dead relative. So talk about that dead relative. That in your soul, you begin to attract familiar spirit to come mimic that dead spirit. Oh, when my father was alive. Hey, my father. My, and you desire his presence. And then a familiar spirit will come. So you have to cut off that unnecessary desire. Who has died, whoever has died, has died. Do you understand that? There is no reincarnation. It's appointed unto men once to die. Once a man dies, that's all. Do you understand that? So stop longing for the dead. And then if you are the type that likes information, because there are people who desire knowledge, you want to know, you want to know, you want to know, and then a demonic spirit begins to give you information. Telling you about things. And you know, there are people who bragged about such things. They say, I, I always know if evil want to happen. But you don't know if good want to happen. You never know when good will happen. But if there will be an accident or something, I will know. Says some, my, my spirit or something will tell me. And if he tells me, it must come to pass. Oh, once, once I receive a revelation that somebody will die, the person must die. <laughs> Let's begin to pray, brethren. Say the person must die. So, and you see, in this revelation, I now dream that I died. Somebody was lamenting over that recently. That all the person she dreamt about that they died, they died. Now she dreamt that she died. And I said, she will not die. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, it will look good and sweet initially. When the spirit is furnishing you with information and influencing and manipulating your life, you will not know that it's gaining legal ground over you. You are giving it legal right. The day will come, it will not give you information that your own time has come. You, it has ended. So, brethren, let's not make room for familiar spirit. Don't, don't fellowship with people who have familiar spirit. And they package it as if his Holy Spirit. Say, behold, the servant of the Most High God, who shows us the way of salvation. People were by the riverside praying that they say, Kai, this girl, Kai. She, she picked things in the realm of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is using her. And you know, when she does that and she shakes and shakes and shakes, and speaking some demonic tongues. You don't know demons speak in tongues too. Speak in tongues. And then you'll be deceived. Say it's God. And she begins to dominate your life. In fact, some people use that to control service, control ministry, control people. And if you want to travel, you have to come and kneel down. And the man will shake. <laughs> And then he will give knowledge. When he has shaken, shaken, shaken. Is this? I'm seeing accident on this trip. Fifty thousand, fifty thousand. God won't use his gift to prophesy or take money from somebody's pocket and put in the preachers or the the first prophet's pocket. He's not God, and he doesn't sell his gift either. You won't come and he says you have to put ten thousand naira down before. I will give you the info. No, that's not God. Let's be on our feet this morning. I want you to thank him for what we have heard. Give him praise. Give him glory. Celebrate him. The reason we have to deal with this spirit is that many times, unknown to us, they begin to influence our life. If Satan wants to attack you, he would need the assignment or assistance of one of these spirits to know what you will likely. If they want to poison a food, for instance, 
uh, they need this type of spirit, familiar spirit, to tell them what you will likely eat, what you cannot resist, what kind of damsel a, a female can bring you down. What, that when you see her, maybe your, your legs will be shaking. So this one, hey, is this type of girl that will bring him down. So they send that type your way. Do you understand? Satan is not omniscience. He doesn't know everything. So he needs the help of familiar spirits to make his kingdom very viral when it comes to information. So that information can flow. And the enemy knows when you want to travel. You understand? If they have access to familiar spirits so that they can cause an accident on the way. Do you understand that? So the familiar spirit is a very vital spirit in the kingdom of darkness. Because information is very vital. And you see they can stay in a territory for generations, thousands of years they are there. They know when you wake up, they are monitoring you. All these familiar spirits are also monitoring spirits. They know when you wake up, they know when you sleep, they know the things that are happening. So that if the enemy wants to throw an arrow, he says, by now he's sleeping, he's sleeping. And then the enemy fires. Now this is not meant to put fear in your heart. You shouldn't be afraid of unclean spirits. Is that clear? Uh, it's to make you gain mastery of the activities of the kingdom of darkness so that you can overcome them. The Bible says we are not ignorant of the whys of the devil. So we, we shouldn't operate in ignorance. We are not trying to make Satan powerful or to promote the knowledge of the kingdom of darkness. But you shouldn't be ignorant of your enemy. Do you understand that? Because ignorance will spell doom. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And Paul said, I would, I would not that you be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. So this morning, I want you to thank him for the word that the Lord has brought to us by his spirit. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Celebrate him. Lord, we thank you. Let your glory fall. You know the song? We are thirsty, Lord. Just play something. Lord, thank you for your word. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you. We praise you. We celebrate you. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Lima konde beri sapena matoska. Alite prebendi barosopa ne deske bana. Oh, we worship you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. This morning, let's specifically repent in every way we have opened the door to familiar spirits. That the Lord will have mercy. You know, sometimes it could even be an ancestral thing. Maybe your great grandfather dealt with these spirits and dedicated the lineage to them. So you see families that everyone in that family have access to knowledge. They always know things. Not by the Spirit of God, though. Why they are even in the world, they always... Have you seen families like that? They, they, they operate in knowledge. Because this Spirit has access to the family lineage. So you see all of them in the family, both father and mother, all of them, they always know things. And they will tell you things. They say, are you? I saw so and so thing happen. And it's always evil things most times. And when they say it, it will happen. So somewhere along the bloodline, somebody partnered with familiar spirit and opened the family lineage to that spirit. And the spirit is having a field day. So let's pray. Or perhaps you have visited places you shouldn't go to. You have kept company with people you should not keep company with. And they left you a souvenir. They gave you an attachment. And that attachment is, is following you wherever you go. In the person of a familiar spirit. Let's pray for mercy. Or have you patronized horoscope? Uchi board. Palm reading.
crystal ball whatever it may be ask God for mercy ask him for forgiveness Oh, si calipe no sabrena, ilamina pande te palaboso kondo. Have you been playing with tarot cards? Ask him for mercy. Ask him for forgiveness. Oh Lord, we seek your mercy. Mani sanda. Horoscope is also called zodiac signs. Zodiac signs. So ask God for mercy. If you have, if you have opened yourself to these things, ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. If you have sought after a familiar spirit to know things, to know the future, ask God for mercy. Ask Him for forgiveness. Oh Lord, we repent on behalf of our families, our bloodline. We repent, oh God, on behalf of ourselves. In every way we have been involved in all forms of channels through which familiar spirits operate. Lord, we pray for mercy. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for mercy. Malisa peno apende berekina ashande parapuna ila brendo sokondo beina epe Calibande, ama paligando, le to sepa, a bide, e tu se ibana. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Say, Father, every legal right or legal ground the enemy has to operate in my life, in my bloodline, whatever gives legality to familiar spirits by the blood of Jesus I take it away I take away their legal right I take away their legal grant in the mighty name of Jesus oh salipa mekendo shalababana ila pene mekendusa apa me pedeske parabino edite pere papana akaye pedoske bana e prapene de bina de paraposa e kondo baina e tapeno e dine e shitapa sapalebeno e likene parabane mado sopeno to palaba e tapane kete pete e dipa sabanash oh maliemo sapena deskabana we take away the illegal ground in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus in Jesus mighty name we are praying sister can you raise that song let your glory
to make three prayer points together and we will be praying against covenant against curses and also against every demonic agreement with familiar spirits whatever cause has come as a result of consulting familiar spirits we are going to pray that the curses be broken whatever covenant has been established with familiar spirits you know you don't need to come to set and say i am going to make a covenant with you know before a covenant is established a covenant is simply an agreement now as long as you agree with them you give them permission if a demonic agent asks you and say do i have permission to help your children or promote once you say yes you've given them permission over your children do you understand that so when you come to ask for assistance you've actually opened the door to the enemy and totally defilements by engaging with such personalities you get defiled you get polluted and then some other strange spirits will begin to pay you visits let's deal with those three say in the name of jesus every covenant with familiar spirits in my life in my bloodline break in the name of jesus every demonic curse evil pronouncement through the head of familiar spirit break in the name of jesus every form of defilement through contact with familiar spirit lord we pray for cleansing by the blood of jesus open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of jesus Sora rapate peke de pedina makapa ali la peno shokondo bare bino e de pe me kalipata a de preke do shokondo ali ma pai ma kande bedo ala kaye bede shataba ila pame te para paye a vende we break the covenant we break the curses we call for cleansing lord lord in place of this defilement let there be cleansing by the blood of jesus in place of contamination let there be cleansing by the blood of jesus thank you father in jesus mighty name we are prayed the lord is showing me somebody looking into a crystal ball a round crystal like ball is inside or sitting on a stand that has three legs i see the person rub on the ball and is looking at it the lord is asking us to pray against monitoring spirits and gadgets whatever satan is using to monitor activities and things happening in your life now let me say this if you have anything that belongs to the occult charms a souvenir from a native doctor or a souvenir from all those traditional environment maybe they will do some carvings they will do some artifacts they will do some souvenirs and it, it has to do with some tradition some kind of uh, um, symbols you know some type of gifts like that that you know are demonic please discard them some of those things are monitoring gadgets and some of those things carry the curse of the devil do you understand that so i want you
to discard them. When you get home, scout around whatever objects belong to Satan. It could be some chains, some necklace, some jewelries with demonic signs. They have those signs, those symbols shaped into jewelries and things like that. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. I remember in one of our services, the Lord called out a woman and told her that the cause of her problem was the necklace she had on her neck. It has the, the um, bracelet or what you call the, the pendant was a, a demonic sign. And it was on her neck. So search for things that belong to Satan. Discard them out of your house and sanctify your home some of those things make room for demonic presence or demonic spirit to come into your house but let's pray say in the name of jesus all monitoring gadgets all objects of the kingdom of darkness monitoring and influencing my life we set them on fire now let them be destroyed in the mighty name of jesus let them be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare in the mighty name of Jesus. Lita pe me kendo shalapa denaka. Aripa me bedise vendo palapina. Ikande bedita palapeno skobara. Itabana mo sokondo pare pavena. E shataba ikande berodine. Eli me papaya gandipa. E kusali. Parabeno Adide Bekende Parapona Etapalabano Sheganda Lekaipa We set them on fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We destroy the works of darkness. We destroy demonic objects, demonic symbols. We destroy, oh God, all properties of Satan that oh Lord in our as a lodge in our environment. We destroy them, we set them on fire. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. In the name that is above every other name, whatever has been set as a monitoring object, gadget, spirits over your life, family, and your activities. We blindfold them today in the mighty name of Jesus. We destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. We break their power and influence over your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to rebuke familiar spirits. We are going to bind them and cast them out to the bottomless pit. But I'd like us to worship God with this song. There's a song coming into my spirit when he says, The angels bow. And worship you. Angel bow, worship you. The redeem worship you, you now. now. Holy, 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 holy are you, Lord. Can you hear the sound of heaven? Can you hear the sound of heaven? Like the sound of many waters is the sound of worship coming from the throne. Can you add a little volume? Dear a cries of adoration as man from man.
there's somebody here you've been taking prediction from somebody who operates by familiar spirit in the name of Jesus we cancel that predictions in the mighty name of Jesus every negative predictions that have been spoken over your life today we bring it to an altar end we nullify it in the mighty name of Jesus whatever desire in any of you for a dead relative for knowledge that is attracting people with familiar spirit to you when you get to the marketplace somebody will walk to you do you understand that say ah madam ah oga and just start giving you predictions how many of you have had experiences like that you go to a marketplace or you go somewhere somebody will walk up to you have you had such experiences okay so such desire for knowledge outside of the Holy Spirit today the Lord remove it from you in the mighty name of Jesus and whatever is upon your life that makes you attracted to the kingdom of darkness whatever attachment whatever is upon your life that causes agents of darkness to find you attractive and come to you in the name of predictions or prophecies today we take it away in the mighty name of Jesus only the Spirit of God will be attracted to you and only those that have the Holy Spirit will be attracted to you in the mighty name of Jesus now let's rebuke familiar spirits let's rebuke it say in the name of Jesus I come against you familiar spirit I bind you I break your hold and power over my lives I cast you to the bottomless pit and I command you to desist from influencing spine familiarizing yourself or predicting the things that concerns my life open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus we rebuke familiar spirits in the mighty name of Jesus we rebuke familiar spirits in every life in every family in every home we rebuke familiar spirits in the mighty name of Jesus we break the hold we break the power of familiar spirits in the mighty name of Jesus we destroy their works we say stay off all that pertains to us stay off in the mighty name of Jesus stay in the mighty name of Jesus, Likate Penosha, Rabine Mekedi Abosa, Alusa Dine Mekedo Sobara. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lastly, I want you to pray for grace to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, God has given His Spirit to you that you may know the things that have been freely given to you. So God does not want you to be ignorant. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12, he says, We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, that we may know the things that have what been freely given to us. So God wants you to know. And the right person that you should get information from or revelation from is the Holy Spirit. And you don't need to be a prophet. For the Holy Spirit to speak to you, you just have to cultivate your relationship with Him. And He will begin by giving you instruction. Read your Bible. Pray. Fast. Just one word. And once you obey, He will begin to give you more instruction. A time will come, He will say, overtake that chariot. A time will come, He will say, three men are seeking you. Go with them, doubting nothing, for I ascend them. You see, it begins to increase. Now, it begins to tell you things you don't know of. But if he says, rise and pray, you say, Kai, this is in film. Or this uh, music. Oh, I'm just enjoying myself. Is this Zazu? I mean, what did they say? It's raining now. 
and you are zazuin and zazuin, he will leave you. When you now say, Holy Spirit, <laughs> should I travel? Or uh, which job should I take? Or which school, which course should I read? He will be quiet. Who should I marry? It will be, that's when familiar people will now rise up. Because when the last movie you watched, it was uh, necromancy that was displayed. They were consulting the dead. And you say, Kai! And then the spirits that follow that particular CD jumps on you. In those days, I used to watch Chinese film. Oh, I loved watching Chinese film. And one day the Holy Spirit said to me, Why are you opening your spirit to violence? You are bringing violence into your spirit. I wasn't fighting or quarreling with anybody. But you know people who have killed didn't know the spirit of murder or death was in them. Until they get angry and pick a knife and, and strike at somebody. They didn't know. But how did they open themselves? Sometimes through movies. When they watch all those horror films. How people are being butchered and all of that. So one day somebody offends him or her. And he remembers that movie and picks that knife. And says, me, I will show you. Before you know what is happening. You've done what you didn't premeditate upon. Or what you didn't bargain for. So please. Cultivate your relationship with the Holy Spirit. A believer had an issue some time ago with somebody and slapped the young man. The young man retaliated with the slap. She ran into the kitchen looking for something to hit him out because it was a young man, you know, he had strength. She was a woman. Couldn't find anything. Came with a kitchen knife and got there and stabbed his chest. Before they could rush the young man to the hospital, he died. I'm telling you a true life story. So many times when we listen to ungodly music, all this rock, all this, you, don't, you have fellowship with a spirit. Ungodly movies, horror films, you have fellowship with a spirit. Immoral uh, films, you have fellowship with a spirit. And one day that spirit will come and influence you. Do you understand? I didn't know I was filling my spirit with violence. Maybe now, God forbid, I would have been punching my, my wife. And you are a pastor. God forbid. But somewhere a spirit found an opening to come in. Do you understand that? So, guide your mind. Don't allow everything into your mind. If I enter a boat or Uber vehicle and they are playing, I just say, please turn it down. And then I play a message. You understand? So that I, the things that comes into my mind, I should be able to see them. I should be able to, so that when I want to hear the Holy Ghost, it will be clear. You can listen to a music. When you are praying, that music will be playing in your mind. Those days when we listen to,